question says, I've heard some scholars say that Hajj is one of the most difficult jurisdictions or one of the most uh, difficult issues of jurisprudence to learn. Uh, is that true or do you agree with that? Um, me personally, me personally, I would say no and yes. No and yes. I don't agree with that absolutely. I think, uh, and we mentioned this in the khutbah yesterday, the exact words I said, it doesn't take a scholar to perform the proper hajj. It doesn't take a student of knowledge to perform the proper hajj. A layman Muslim can do it properly. So from that aspect, no, it's not difficult at all. It's very simple, very easy. And let's break that down again. Okay, so, um, first and foremost is no one makes hajj by themselves today. Back in the day, it was a bit different. People could travel. The concept of a passport, a visa, it wasn't really how it was, like how it is now. All right. Nowadays, and most when most people make hajj, they make hajj with a group. So oftentimes, you'll find a brother or a sister, a woman out of mahram, and she travels safely. She's protected because she's with the group. So oftentimes, you may not know nothing, but just being around knowledgeable people in a group, you can copy them. You can copy them. Now, obviously, if you get lost or certain issues that may come up and will pop up, that's a different story. But the point is, you could just be around the people and do the right thing. Let alone if you had a small booklet that was a trustworthy booklet, no bid'ah in it, no weak narrations, but a good, thorough, basic booklet. And if someone explains it to you simply, you can make a basic hajj by making the umrah, first and foremost. And the umrah is extremely simple. You go from New York City to uh, or, or, or Newark, you go to Medina. In the hotel, you take off all of your clothes. You take the uh, ihram clothing, a towel around your waist, and a towel on your body. Shower, trimming fingernails, trimming your mustache, putting on oil, no extra stuff. Just put on the stuff. The bus will drive from the hotel, the Hilton, to the place called Dhul Hulayfa, in which you just say, Allahumma la baika, such and such. You make, the te you, you make your, your, your niya, you pronunciate your niya, what you intend to do. That may be the most difficult thing. After that, you say those words, you get on the bus, you don't have to say anything. Allahumma, you don't have to say no tarbiyah, none of that is obligatory. You get to the Mashar al-Haram, you see the Kaaba, raising your hand, making dua, you don't have to do any of that. You start by making your first circuit from the black uh, stone all the way around. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Then you don't have to make the two rak'ah of behind Naqam Ibrahim. You go right into make the sa'i. You start at Safa, don't say anything, no dua, nothing. Go to Marwa once, no dua, you don't have to stop, say any dua, supplication. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Shave your head, done. Umrah is over. You go back to the hotel, take a shower, you eat, you drink, whatever you want to do. Then come the eighth day of that month, Dhul Hijjah. You don't have to go to Mina. It's not obligatory to go to Mina. You can just go on the ninth day to what? To Arafah. As long as you get there before the day is over. If you go to the tent in Arafah, you don't have to stand. You don't have to pray. You don't have to recite. You don't have to say anything but just be there physically for one part of the day. Let's say you got there an hour before sunset. Sufficient. Done. After that, you travel to Muzdalifah. On the bus, on your motorcycle, on your bike, whatever. You don't have to make no supplications. And the only thing that you do in Muzdalifa is you make Maghrib and Isha. That's it. You go to sleep. You wake up. You make your normal Fajr. No special supplications. No special Dua. After that, you proceed to stone. And you start off with the Aqaba, the biggest one. Jamrat al-Aqaba. Okay? Obviously, you're not going to slaughter anything because there's too many people. You've paid for that service already. You shave your head. You go from Mina to Mashr al-Haram. You make Tawaf once more. And you make the Sa'i. That's it. Then you go back to Mina before the middle of the night. You sleep there. No special dua, no special dhikr, nothing that you have to say. And then next morning, 12 p.m., 12.30 p.m., 1 p.m., you, you, you stone all three jamras. And then you go back and you go to sleep. And the next day you do the same thing. You go back home, you go to sleep. After the second night, you can leave Mina. The last thing that you have to do before you leave Mecca, go back home, is the farewell tawaf. Tawaf al wata. That's it. So that right there is extremely simple and easy. That's extremely simple and easy. Now, the yes part of the answer, what happens if I forget? What happens if I had to break my wudu? What happens if I get my menstruation? What happens, what happens, what happens? These things that can pop up. Or 
when Muslims from different backgrounds, like how it is in America, mix. The leader of the group is Maliki, but I'm from Indonesia, where he follows Shafi. And this brother said, there's no madhab, madhab is bid'ah. And he hears a fatwa, he hears a fatwa, he, he, then that's a problem. Can I stone before zawal? Then it's a problem. A woman has menstruation, can she make the tawaf without later on? Can she come back? Then it becomes what? Sticky. So these technicalities can come up. And among many technicalities, there's a khilaf shadid. Bain al-fuqaha. Bain al-salafi wal-khalaf. Of all generations. And this is why they would say about someone that he was uh, lahu mansak. Lahu faqih bil manasik. They would say this about someone in the past that he has strong ilm of fiqh because of the difficulties and the different intricacies that can come in and out. There's no question about that. So from that aspect of the difference of opinion of the nawazil, and that's even deeper now today because it's modern technology. We have nawazil, we have modern technology that didn't exist back then. There's electricity, there's this, there's buses, the bus breaks down. There's all types of things now that did not what? Exist back then. So now you have to have a great deal of fiqh to master it and have the ability to answer the question and intent and to lead others in the hajj. No doubt about that. La shak fi hadha. But the simple basic fiqh of hajj for a layman Muslim is like a piece of cake. It's like a piece of cake. Everybody understand this? So I wouldn't necessarily agree that it's the most difficult thing, but there are certain things which are challenging. And you have to have a good foundation, especially, like I said, when you're in and under pressure. One time we made hajj, uh, and it was, Allah knows how hot it was. It was scorching hot. So I was still was in school in Medina, and uh, the brothers from America, they came. And um, some of the brothers from Brooklyn came, some of my good friends. So it was a brother who had his father. His father was an older man, big, big, big guy. So he had bad ankles, and he had to push him in a wheelchair. He's pushing him, he's hot, and he's sweating. So he's pushing on the brother's strong, the son is strong, this brother with his wife, this one, this one, people were arguing, confused, lost, etc. When things were going bad, they became worse. The wheelchair broke. The wheel popped off. And he did, it was too late to go back to the tent. So he took his father and he put him on the hind wheels of the chair and pushed him the whole way to stone. We had a canteen of water and a, uh, a spray bottle. That's all we had. Only Allah knows how many times we've drunk from this canteen. Hal min al karamat. Man, there's some behind this shay. Allah alam. Lakin sharibna wa shabirna wa roina wa atishna wa kulli shay. Are those kaif? I sprayed him, sprayed him with the bottle. He was sweating, boiling in sweat. And his father's a big, big guy. I was like, wow, man, look how good of a son he is pushing him. So the point is, he had to ask me, Mufti, can I go back? Can I do this? Can he gather, gather? So when you're on the spot, in the heat of it, you have to what? You have to have a great deal of knowledge. I'm not saying I have a great deal of knowledge. You have to have a great deal of practice. So that right there is challenging. It's not like Salat. You make Salat, you finish Salat. Huh? This is several days. These are human beings, people, just as swarms of people, crowd. The worst thing that happens, someone gets lost. You have to go back, you have to stop, you have to do this. The worst thing that can happen, a person doesn't have will do. They have to wait two hours to use the bathroom. You have to have the knowledge of these things. And not only the knowledge of hajj, but the knowledge of the other ibadat, such as salah, such as wudu. And all fiqh issues are connected to each other. Because now the person's issue is not just an issue of tawaf anymore. It's not an issue of wudu. It's not an issue of menstruation. It's not an issue of money, of riba, of this and that, the card. The list goes on. Right, of kaif? So, so I would say it's a, it's a no and a yes answer. And Allah knows best. Hopefully that makes sense. Isn't it good with the good Saudi government? I know they disperse like volunteers around. Mm -hmm. uh, we'll give, like, you know, Instructions. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I think they just, like, there, there's a lot of volunteers. Of course. Of course. I mean, you, 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 have, you have the, the, the Boy Scouts. Okay, the young Boy Scouts, you have the, uh, the police officers, you have the volunteers, you have the people that actually work for the Hajj. It's, it's several things. But even so, even so, it's, even so, it's still a lot. Because those people aren't, always aren't there. Or it's a language barrier. You understand? Or there are certain things that just may be above their heads. The Boy Scouts aren't fuqaha. They've, they've learned basic things. And, and the last thing that I'll say is, Going back to the main message of just knowledge. Uh, and the haqq is said, okay? It's not about praising or dispraising, but the truth is the truth. 
you might find some of these Boy Scouts, they may learn in middle school and high school what grown men from other countries have never even heard of. And that's from the barakah of the ilm and the curriculum in those schools in Saudi Arabia. They may learn in middle school, listen to me, middle school, what a grown man may have never heard of from another country. That's because they were taught proper fiqh, proper hadith, proper aqidah, things like this. Mm -hmm. And Allah knows best.